Yeah, I wanted to um, also talk a little bit about how the risk group is doing nowadays. Basically showing the um, the deaths per day. And, and these, this is the diagram from Folkhetsamuniketen. So we see how many people died per day. So you have a bit of a feeling for how the first wave of the pandemic was going on and, and how the dates when things were defined and taken care of for the risk groups fall into that big picture. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact is that they're still waiting for a protection fund for 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 money to to help them when someone cannot work from home of course they would prefer to stay home and self isolate right and and this is now for people that are in the working age right so from everyone under 67 or under 70 i think the definitions are actually from 18 years to 67 years um so they're still waiting for their money because they can start to apply for it on on the 24th of August so in 2 days they they can start to apply for it and then this this money will cover uh from July 1st to 30th of September only not April so, so not April no hmm. and um when you look how how this was this process was so slow it it just doesn't really resonate with saying oh we want to protect the risk groups because how did they really protect them during the first wave of the pandemic? The first definitions for risk groups were, were out on uh, the 17th of April. They were published by Social Studelsen on the 17th of April. Then there was an updated report on the 1st of June and the government's um, uh, decision was made on the 25th of June. So, and then everything was handed over to First Rekling's Kassan and in and two days start applying for it so so this when i when i look at it like this and i i started wondering like how can you say you want to protect the risk groups when you're not really actually protecting them and that makes me just really really sad and upset and i'm sure everyone in the risk group feels the same and and then we can also look at the definitions like who is actually in the risk group so if you take a look who is in the risk group um, it's people that have cancer, um, but it has to be people that have just um, ongoing or yeah, that have an ongoing or or newly um, finished uh, behandling um, treatment. Yeah. Treatment, yeah. Um, then they need to have uh, at the same time two of these. Um, um, sicknesses that I mentioned here. So uh, heart or blood vessel um, sickness, pulmonal arterial hypertension, um, then um, diabetes, hypertony, uh, complications with at least one organ system or um, um, kidney function uh, uh, that doesn't it's not working well with the kidney, um, mm. lung disease. So, um, so you have to have two of these, not just one. Right. And then you fall into the risk groups. Then it's people that have a high body mass index over 40, um, people with neur neurological uh, or neuromuscular diseases. Um, being your boss, Vict. You have to help me with that translation. <laughs> I didn't look into it. Bin djuresvikt. Cortisol. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Edison's disease, that's Edison's exactly. disease. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, um, or you have to have had an organ transplant or, or a, a really serious immune um, dysfunction. Det här ser ut att vara väldigt ovanliga sjukdomar rent generellt sett. Mm -hmm. Och ska so, man dessutom ha två? Säg igen. So, and then you also have to have two of them. Yeah, yeah here. Two uh, under, rare side um, effects, right? Well, under the second point, it says you have to have more than one of these following. Right. And then 
the the others i mean it's either cancer or or fetma or mm -hmm. the others doesn't matter so much for but for if you have uh, the the the, the mm, diseases that are listed under point 2 it needs to be two and not just one i see uh, and and the first report that came out on the 17th of april uh, it also had some numbers um for an estimation how many people that would cover and that was about 200,000 people so that's like 2.3% of the population in Sweden. Så om man, jäm om man jämför med andra länders mm. definition av riskgrupper, hur ser, hur ser det ut? Mm. So I have the definitions here from the UK. And they distinguish actually between very high risk and moderate risk. And then you can take a look at how many people would fall into these groups at really high risk. It's also 2.3% of the population. So these are similar. Mm -hmm. um, whereas people that are at moderate risk, that's like 28.5% um, of the population. So, you know, you probably know someone who has, uh, who is a little bit at higher risk because they fall into this moderate risk group definitions from the UK. Because in, in Sweden, it was co would correspond to two to three million people, right? So you, you probably know a few of those, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I know several. <laughs> uh, my sister is one of them. She's luckily in Germany and she lives there in a mm -hmm. place where for, for disabled people specifically. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm glad that they're taking much better care of her there. So she is uh, being uh treated as high risk and she uh she wears a mask and her assistants wear masks and uh mm -hmm. and and i i just you know watching her being treated so well and then talking to people here in sweden that don't that are not treated with precautions and 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 careful mm -hmm. enough that have assistants that don't have to wear masks that makes me just really Yeah, sad. Mm. Ja. Även, även jag såg längst ner så står det att de som är gravida mm -hmm. är också risk. Mm -hmm. Alla gravida är riskgrupp. Mm -hmm. At moderate risk, yes. Mm. Uh, and in Sweden, mm, pregnant women were actually taken out of the definitions between 17th of April and 1st of June. So, I don't know. Maybe some regions actually... Uh, do it differently locally and, and say maybe in the last couple of weeks of the pregnancy, someone mm -hmm. doesn't have to work anymore. I've heard that from some people, but I don't have the source for it. But um, but I think in general, when you look at the definitions, they're not included anymore right now. Mm. And that's that's also, I think it's, it's <clears> not, <throat> not right. Um, and and I, I wonder, uh, how much pregnant women are actually at higher risk. And there was just some news the other day about a newborn baby that had COVID. And it's like, this shouldn't even happen, right? I mean, even maybe if it's mild, but but why can't we prevent this? Why, why does nobody really seem to care much? That's my- We care, we care. Nej, alltså det här är ju ganska intressant att vi har olika eh, definitioner för, av, av eh, riskgrupp i Sverige och i utlandet. Hur, vad tycker du Anders om, om det? Är du, jag gissar att du är i riskgrupp eller knackar på riskgrupp eh, åldersmässigt och, 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 och jag kanske också har någon, någonting där och eh, åtminstone moderat eller hur? Ja, det här är väl med all sannolikhet en ekonomisk fråga därför att eh, om ersättning eh, okay. när man beskriver de här riskgrupperna och hur, eh, vad man är villig att, att ersätta folk som är hemma och ett eh, lätt cyniskt eh, ställningstagande kan man tycka. Det, eh, mm. Jag menar när man pratar om, om äldreboendena och... Eh, personalen på äldreboende, att många av dem hade tillfälliga jobb och hade inte råd att vara hemma om de var sjuka och smittsamma. Utan de gick till jobbet ändå och tyckte det var förfärligt. Samma sak här är ju lite grann att man tycker att man kan skicka iväg folk med, med, med risk. Mm. 
Därför att de kan inte försörja sig annars. Precis.